Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with the best blueberry bread pudding. That's right, this comforting crowd pleaser is not only super easy to make, it will pretty much work with any seasonal fruit you'd like to use. And at the risk of jinxing you, I will say this is virtually impossible to mess up. And by the way, I threw in that jinx part in case you do mess it up. At least you'll be able to blame me. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by slicing up one loaf of bread. And I'm going to try to get these slices somewhere between a quarter and a half inch thick, which I believe is also known as three eighths of an inch. And while this will pretty much work with any French or Italian loaf of bread, I do recommend using a sourdough, since that little bit of tanginess is going to work so well with the sweetness of the fruit in the custard. And yes, in case you're wondering, I am going to put a piece of salami on this end piece. And by the way, in a perfect world, this bread will be very stale and dry already, which in my case is not the case. So after I finish slicing this, I'm going to go ahead and dry this out in the oven. And yes, I could have used two pans so they're not overlapped, but that's really not a problem, especially since I'm going to turn them over maybe halfway through the drying process. And then all I'm going to do is go ahead and transfer that into a 350 degree oven. But as soon as I do, I'm going to turn off the heat. And I'm just going to let it sit in the oven for like three or four hours, at which point it should be very close to bone dry. And that's it. Once we have our stale bread set, or at least our bread set to be stale, we can move on to the batter, which is nothing more than a very simple custard, which is going to start with four whole eggs, plus four egg yolks. And if we don't feel like separating, we can just do this with six whole eggs, but I think the texture is nicer with the yolks. And yes, don't worry, I see that eggshell, and it will be gone when we transition to the next shot. And then to our eggs, we will add a nice big pinch of salt, a little touch of white sugar, as well as a little bit of brown sugar, which for whatever reason seems to work really well with blueberries. All right, it's probably the molasses in there. And then what we'll do is grab a whisk and start mixing this very enthusiastically until the mixture turns from something that's kind of a deep gold color and fairly grainy into something much lighter and much fluffier and not grainy. And don't bother getting your electric mixer all dirty. Right, this is only going to take you about a minute. Plus, doing it by hand is going to raise our heart rate. So we got that going for us, which is nice. And that's it. Once our mixture looks a little something like this, we can stop. And we'll add the rest of the ingredients. And those will include some real pure vanilla extract. And please accept no substitutes. We will also add some cinnamon, which is another thing that seems to pair perfectly with blueberries. And then we'll also include a little bit of freshly grated lemon zest at which point we'll finish this off with some whole milk, as well as some heavy cream. And some recipes use all one or the other, but to me a combination gives our custard the perfect level of richness. And then once all that's been transferred in, we'll go ahead and give this a quick mix with our whisk before we transfer in our stale, dry, and as you can hear, very hard bread. Oh yeah, bowl don't lie. And then what we'll do is kind of toss this around until it starts to soften up, at which point we can kind of press it down with our hands, submerging it down into the batter the best we can. And if everything goes according to plan, this amount of custard batter should be almost fully absorbed by a one pound loaf of bread. And by the way, that only works if it's stale, right? We want that bread to be 100% custard, which will not happen if the bread still has moisture in it. So as we say in the business, if it's not dry, it's not fly. And then what we'll do once we have that pressed down as shown, is let it sit absorbing that custard for at least 20 minutes, during which we can give it the occasional pressing down. And since I got tired of washing my hands, I went ahead and used a spatula. And then once our bread has been sufficiently soaked, I like to do one optional step, and that would be to pull out maybe seven or eight still somewhat intact slices that I will use to finish the top. And fair warning, after sitting in the custard for 20 minutes, that bread is pretty much gonna fall apart, which is fine, that's what we want but I'm usually able to grab a few slices off the top and I'm going to show you what I do with those very shortly. And then once that's set, the only thing we have left to do is generously butter our casserole dish. And I do mean generous. Do not be shy with the butter. And then what we'll do once our baking dish has been extremely and thoroughly greased is we will transfer in roughly half the total amount of our soaked bread. And like I said, it's going to be very much falling apart at this point, but that is exactly what we want to happen. In fact, if this was still in slices, I would tell you to break it up, since we really do want to have tons of nooks and crannies for our blueberries to fall into. So like I said, we'll go ahead and transfer in about half of our total amount of soaked bread, making sure we have a very even but highly irregular layer 
on top of which we can now transfer one pound of the best blueberries you can find. And then we'll take our fingertips and kind of poke that down into those nooks and crannies. And that's it once our fruit layer is done. We can go ahead and transfer over the rest of the bread in the bowl. And we'll distribute that nice and evenly before topping this with those partially intact slices. And again, if you want to skip that optional step, feel free. A completely irregular and gnarly top is very traditional and will still look fantastic. But this is how I learned to do it at a brunch restaurant I worked at many, many decades ago. And I always liked how it looked, so that's how I do it. But you suit yourself. I mean, you are after all the Cuba gooding of your bread pudding. And speaking of juniors, you can, if you want, also do this in individual size ramekins. And that's actually a pretty good strategy if you only want to make a few portions. But anyway, once we've finished off that top layer, whether it's whole slices like I'm doing or just chunks, we'll want to make sure to transfer on any of that excess batter. And then to finish this off before it goes in the oven, I'm going to go ahead and apply a generous amount of melted butter to the top and suggest you do the same. And some people also like to sprinkle over some sugar on top of the butter, which I've done before. But this time I decided not to, since this is going to be plenty sweet enough and it should bake up into a beautiful golden brown whether we do or not. And that's it. Once that's set, we'll go ahead and transfer that onto a sheet pan, since there is a real possibility of a bubble over. So we should probably play it safe. And that's it. That is now ready to transfer into the center, or at least the upper center, of a 375 degree oven for about an hour, or until it's puffed up and beautifully browned, and hopefully looks like this. And then as hard as it might be, we really do need to let this sit for at least 20 minutes, a half hour, before we even think of serving this up. And while this sits and cools, it will deflate a little bit and sort of sink down into the dish. And we can if we want to help that by pressing down with a spatula. But don't press too hard. Otherwise, you're going to squeeze those juices up over the sides. And that's not where we want them. We want those staying in our bread pudding. So I went ahead and let mine cool down, giving it a press occasionally while I waited. At which point I removed it from the pan and then went ahead and served it up. Which personally, I think you should do at room temperature or just barely, barely warm. Right, for me this was still a little too hot to serve, but it was getting near the end of the day and the light was nice, so I grabbed a spoon and served some up anyway. And I proceeded to garnish with a nice dollop of whipped cream, which is totally and absolutely unnecessary. And I only did that so I could garnish with a sprig of mint, which is also totally and absolutely unnecessary. But as you might know, I'm contractually obligated to take some pictures. But anyway, you garnish or don't garnish as you see fit. And after taking the aforementioned pictures, I went ahead and dug in. And as you might know or have noticed, I'm actually shooting in a new kitchen, and I haven't quite figured out where to stand for the best eating shots. And right here, I'm trying to eat some from behind so as not to block the shot. But that didn't go very well, so I switched to the side approach, which worked out a lot better. But I am totally burying the lead, which is that this blueberry bread pudding was absolutely magnificent. All right, this had the perfect amount of sweetness, the perfect level of richness, and the perfect ratio between soft, custardy bread, that crispy, brown, buttery bread on the top and sides, and of course our gorgeous fruit. Right, I could not have been more happy with how this came out, other than like I already said, it was still a touch too hot for me. I just think you taste all the elements better if it's just slightly warm. And even though I kind of made fun of it, that little bit of whipped cream on the top was kind of nice. Although to be honest, a couple bites in, I was wishing it was a little scoop of vanilla ice cream in case you needed one extra serving suggestion. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling the best blueberry bread pudding. Mostly because nobody can prove otherwise. But also, I do actually believe it. I really do think this is the perfect formula and should work out just about the same no matter what seasonal fruit you decide to feature. So for those reasons and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts a printable written recipe and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.